right. Okay. We got That's the counter on said. three, two, one. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pin the Gas Podcast. As always, it's so good to be here. I am your host, Cool Jules, as well as Chris, the whole effing show, Simcoe, and our special guest of the afternoon, Mr. Adam to the 10th power, Bauer. Welcome to the building. Not our building, but he's in some building. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a building where it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, where really are you cold. at right now? What is all that in the background? Para, I'm in my uh, my little man cave area here. Uh above my workshop with this is like my my joey dunlop wall Whew. with uh a bunch of stuff sheesh Lord that's Hammers. awesome <laughs> talk about candy land it's a candy <laughs> land for <laughs> for for uh motorsports enthusiasts especially on two wheels that's right? why we're all here yeah <laughs> because we love this shit adam could you quickly just like just give the fellas and some of the ladies that watch this a rundown of who you are what you be and why you're so gangster. I don't know if I'm gangster or not, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adam Bauer. I started road racing back in like 1995, uh, Brainerd, Minnesota, Brainerd International Raceway uh, when I was like 17. And uh, my dad raced in Japan in the 60s. So that's where I kind of got all of the whole uh, road racing bug from and through. Uh, I started riding dirt bikes when I was three. Um, and then and yeah, I mean, I kind of have always talked about like the Isle of Man and stuff like that. And uh, yes. 20, what was it, 2015, I got an opportunity to go over with my friend Alan Cunningham. Um, and he brought me over there, introduced me to his sponsors, and um, kind of the rest is history there. Uh, mm-hmm. Friends. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, 2016. Uh, raced in Ireland a couple times. Uh, went over to England and raced. Shit, dude. Um, and then, uh, when, you know, I made my debut at the Manx on the Isle of Man. So, been kind of all all over the place. Um, uh, in the states, I've raced everywhere from Daytona to Laguna to <laughs> kind of all over the place. I just east west mainly north heartland park been kind of all over probably 50 different tracks i've ridden in the states but it's been a long time so <laughs> so that that to me is is gangster within and of itself yes yeah, so my that, man raced on every single thing game. that has a road <laughs> an that, has, that has a road yeah, an, an island right, right overseas and little bumper guards probably <laughs> raced the boat to get there <laughs> probably <laughs> probably what was your uh what was your weapon of choice like 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 what what bike was like your favorite uh to race with currently it's you know the 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 bike that I, my sponsor owns is a it's a cbr 600 rr and it's an ex uh michael dunlop lee johnston bike and just man nice that's oh, mega shit. it's got it's got all the goodies on it and we ran it with just a stock motor this year and it last year i guess now um and it did the business and brought me home and you know we'll we'll do it again next year and we'll see how it goes that's awesome that's freaking sweet yes chris. it is yeah uh so uh our mutual friend chris toluck uh, he actually has a question for you he he, oh. he actually it, well he wants to uh he wants to make sure you tell us all about your uh motorcycle aerobat aerobatics mm, yes yes, yes. Aer- <laughs> oh Oh, we're getting ready to get a show. We got. It. <laughs> so I, I kind of might have, I might, I might have done something like that. <laughs> oh man, that's <laughs> that's gangster. That's just gangster. I, I don't know how else to describe uh, it. Yeah, that's straight gangster. Yeah, I, I, I was a little too close to somebody at at the Ulster Grand Prix in 2016. Uh, last lap of the Super Sport race. Uh, he, the rider in front of me, checked up right at the apex, and I clipped his rear tire with my front, and oh. I lost the front. Went on my knee, got it back up, and then whacked the throttle, spun the rear up, went high side of myself to the moon. So, oh my god, big oh shit moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got, you, don't, you really don't want to crash on the real roads. It's not really an no. an option. <laughs> nope. No, no. <laughs> Would you say that, that that was one of your most like wicked wipeouts or what? No, nah, no, nah, that was, I mean, it was, it, 
it was wicked because there were like four or five photographers and I've got over 200 <laughs> sequence from all different angles. So it was like, but Shit. Uh, probably my worst accident was uh, 2004. I high sided my 250 at Brainerd and I broke Ooh. my stuff. So that one was, uh, that one I landed head upside down at about a hundred miles an hour. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh. <laughs> and, and and here I am telling people that I wiped out going 20 miles an hour on grass. <laughs> and I felt yeah, like right. I had battle scars. That shit, there's nothing compared to what you guys do. Oh, oh, we got something else. We got something else. Let's go. Yes. What we got? Well, you know, it, you, you, you keep some souvenirs, you know, you get stuff like cast. Oh, my- <laughs> And then uh-huh. <laughs> all the custom, you know, my, my, my Joey Dunlop painted a eye that I landed on my head upside down when I broke my oh. back. It's worth something. It's worth something, guys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Put it in a motorcycle museum up there in men of freaking cold soda. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No what shit. what is your so what 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 is your days like like um if you're not if you're not road racing and it's snowy as shit outside and it's butt fucking cold like what what do you what do you do I got I got the workshop I work on bikes uh, I'm renovating a bunch of stuff in our house remodeling mm-hmm. replacing doors and I do I do a little bit of everything man I mean I've uh, replacing windows doors <laughs> exterior <laughs> doors interior doors uh, right right but uh, but yeah, I got the workshop here. So tell us about your. Uh, you... Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was saying I were, I'm out in the workshop oh. all the time. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's actually the question I was I, I was going to have is uh, tell us about your, your your motorcycle workshop and the bikes you work on. Are they just your personal bikes, or you do you know customer bikes or friends or? This year, I kind of start. Uh, I quit taking customer stuff in for the most part, and just been working on my own, just because I've got so many projects that I'm trying to catch up on. Um, but, uh, it, uh, it's getting to the point now where I'm getting kind of caught up. So that's good. Um, you guys want to see it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like this little yes. show and tell thing going on. <laughs> yes. Let's get it. I like anybody, it. Anybody thirsty? God <laughs> damn. Here, how about, I know I'm going the, in the winter time. Get some Repsol body work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> nice. Damn. There's there's that's Pike's Peak. Oh nice. shit. Look at this. PTG's ver- first version of Cribs. It's PTG right, so, Cribs. Yeah. yeah, this this is so this is this is uh this is us walking in the door here at the shop. Got some chemicals, turn some lights on here. Shoot, can you do my oil change, man? What the fuck? But yeah, I got you know tire changing machines, balancers. Oh my god. Um <laughs> ultrasonic cleaner. What have I got here? I got uh this is my uh, this is my race bike motor, the that's kind of getting ready to go get go to the builder and get re- reassembled um, for my race, my ZX6R. This is a little KX100 I'm doing for a customer. Um, what have I got here? I got uh, that's an RD350 that I'm doing for a friend. Oh. And there's a couple of frames, so we're making one out of like three bikes. Um, that's my NSR 250 project. Yeah, it's a 92 oh. NSR 250 in Repsol Ooh, colors, 300 CC big bore kit in it, all that fun stuff. Got to have the toolbox, you know, uh, just, just gotta... in case, just in case that, uh, that this episode goes on Spotify. I just want to let everyone know that Mr. Adam to the 10th power Bauer is showing us his little workshop and it is God on heaven. If, if if you guys are listening to this on Spotify, you got to look at the YouTube portion of this because this is beautiful. <laughs> Very beautiful. A little knee mill. Got my lathe over here. A little parts washer. And I got my grinders and stuff over there. A little DT250 I'm working on. And then this is my, this is my ZX6R that it's, is in pieces. Yep. <laughs> Wait, that- Boat motors, generators, water pumps, beer fridge. <laughs> what, don't they don't they look in the fridge on cribs? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they they do. Have much, there isn't much for beer in there, but you know. I it's... see Chibani. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there you go. I love Chibani. Could you imagine a, a Chibani sponsored race team? You know what? Since we're doing this, we're I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a, a quick treat on. Uh, we're going outside in the freezing cold yes. here, so. We're gonna we're gonna show you that we're gonna show you the big shop real quick since we got some time. 
ladies and gentlemen, Look he just that. stepped into Narnia because of all the snow that is outside. I'll, if if I start losing, yeah, let me know. All right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think it froze yeah, a little bit though. Snow banks here. There's the snow banks. They're as tall as me. Oh, there. Oh, oh man, a little bit. Holy shit! Yeah, so That's he's taking us snow. into a to another realm of his reality. Oh. This is awesome. I I think I think he might have froze. Maybe it got too cold outside. At work in. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, your you're, image... you're, you're frozen. Yeah, you're frozen. How about now? Oh, there now. you go. I see you a little bit. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I see it. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> I see that 250. Look Holy that, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> Dude. Adam, I'm coming over. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's was, that was wild, yo. Damn. Yeah, I'm coming over. <laughs> Holy sure. Shit. What? what a showroom. Like, There's even, even more Isle of Man, more Joey Dunlop. <laughs> Man, I'll say. Damn, yo. And then, uh, like I said, I'm doing a bunch of construction, so my workshop is actually I got all the siding off the front of it because we're doing that, but that's the actual workshop. That's awesome. I love it. The size of it and just all the bikes you got in there. That's a uh, man. I would give my both my nuts just to have one of them bikes. <laughs> Dude, that's a fact. Motorcycle heaven, yo. Yes. <laughs> yes, he showed me that picture of his two fifty earlier, and I was like, oh my god. You can hear him. You can hear him climbing yeah, up I the stairs. Him. Do, 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 do. You can hear him like. Yep. Trudging. <laughs> deep hey, I'm not that far out of the <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, that that, that was actually in the cold. That 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 was actually going to be my uh, my next question is uh, what is your uh, what is your physical preparation like before a race? Like 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 what what is it that you usually do? Uh, normally drink a lot of beer. Uh, Amen. My up. man. Eight, <laughs> Don't sleep at night. No, I, uh, local races, any prep other than get the bike ready and then go out and ride. Um, Isle of Man stuff, totally different ball game. Go to bed early, get up yeah. kind of early, um, hike up to the paddock from, from Douglas, and, and then get ready to go. You, you put the bike through in the morning, and, the, and you don't ride till the evening, so it's kind of a weird... Um, Experience. But yeah, that's it. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a set routine that I go. Mm. The biggest thing is just calming yourself down before you go out. Yeah, that's true. It is, especially for it the is. Island Man, because that's one it, serious, wicked fucking race. So, Adam, yeah, tell us um, about your first journey over there, um, to the island, and, and what that experience was like, and what it Ooh. entails to actually, you know, make the journey over there. Yes, sir. That it's it's a it's a little bit of a hike right there. You know, I mean, uh, let's see. The first year I did it, we we just flew. I was in, I was in Denver. I flew to San Francisco to meet up with and his wife, and then we flew to Dunn, and then and then a little puddle jumper to the Isle of Man. Um, after like a five hour layover, of course. Um, he's always there. and yeah, I mean. It's there is no straight shot there, so there's always a, uh, you know, but this that's year beer time, to... that layover yeah. beer time, right? Yeah. Oh, this year, this year I met up with Stuart Clotworthy, another American uh, uh, racer that did the Manx on a Super Twin, and we ended up. I, I think we got pretty schnockered at the pub there in uh, in London Heathrow. I really, I, we almost missed the plane, the Isle of Man. <laughs> we were talking <laughs> loud speaker. We're like, uh, oops, is that us? <laughs> Are they calling just, us? <laughs> Shit, we gotta imagine. go. Just beer in hand, like <laughs> fucking motorcycle racer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm important. <laughs> Hold the door. Uh, I think uh, I, I don't know, Chris. Can, can you see my camera? I don't see him on camera. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, I, I don't see Adam anymore on my camera. Oh uh, no. You got mind? 
Yeah, I think uh, I think your camera. I can turned, hear you. Camera's turned I, off, sir. Yeah, I, I I can't see you on my camera. But we can uh, hear you. you. Locked up. Oh, there you go. Oh, now yeah. I see that beautiful face. There Chris, you go. Like you're sticking something in your mouth, and uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know what's like, going on. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. But what is man, going on? It, so so with with all the. With all the uh, the the traveling and the racing, and and just staying busy in the sport, you must have had some crazy experiences with people. Um, when it comes to meeting like professionals, right? Who would you say was like your best experience uh, meeting somebody? I mean, I've met so many people. I mean. You know, I've uh, through through the whole Isle of Man thing. I've met, you know, I met Freddie Spencer, Giacomo Agostini. I've met John McGinnis, Michael Dunlop, William Dunlop, um, Guy I'm Martin, lucky. All, all sorts of people. Oh. You know? And um, I guess the 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 coolest thing is is when you go over there and you're on, on the Isle of Man. Everybody's calm. It's not a it's not an event where people don't want you to finish. Uh, and they want you to do, you know, they want you to get home safe and, and get around, Absolutely. you know, I've, I've done laps with William Dunlop. I've done laps with all sorts of different, you know, TT stars, you know, so to speak. Um, Davey Morgan took me under his wing, um, in 2015. Yeah. And, I mean, him and I, I, I mean, him and I have done over 50 laps probably together, um, with me, Davey, and uh, one of my sponsors, John Batty, and uh-huh. and then other newcomers with us because I, I would go out with a newcomer. Um, uh, even in 2015, when my first year when I wasn't riding, I went out with newcomers every lap that I could do, um, just to try to learn the place. So, I mean, it I've had lots of really great experiences meeting people, I haven't had any bad experiences meeting any superstars or whatever. Um, Look at you. Yeah, I mean it's it's just been it's always been good experiences. So, so so uh, uh, tell tell me your craziest paddock story overseas, like wild drunken nights. I, I know you got to have some uh, a car rental crazy story, something. Oh, I got one. I got yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, buddy of mine, JD Mosley, rented a Nissan Juke. Yeah, Everything, everything's right hand drive over there. You know, so you're driving on the oh, the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Um, it's two o'clock in the morning, um, and we're doing laps in this Nissan Juke. <laughs> he asked me if I want to if I want to have a go, so I'm like, "All right," because I'd been t- you know I'd basically been I had done probably over fifty laps of the place with instructors, and the nice thing about one of my instructors, he would make me talk new you know new riders through the lap myself and correct me when I was wrong and stuff. So right. Uh, I had called it out a lot. Well, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, we take off from the grandstand area and I'm cruising along and we're hammering pretty good. And <laughs> it was, it was pretty funny. Cause like we, we went over Baloff at like, I want to say 50 miles an hour. I had that thing, but we were probably two feet in the air. Um, oh, God. We know awesome. it, was, it was, it was nuts, but we in did a rental a, car. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> Fucking right. We we got back to the grandstand and and uh, JD like clipped the clipped the stopwatch. He's like, "Holy fuck, Bauer! We we're under twenty seven minutes." <laughs> oh shit, dude! That's <laughs> on the juke. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> on the At juke. Two, morning, I was going up the mountain mile, just uh, wide open as fast as the thing would go. You know, flip to the floor everywhere. But that's so awesome. By the time you know, this podcast releases, Nissan Juke sales are going to go up. Majorly go up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Invest your stocks now, ladies and gentlemen. So is the right. rental fees. Yeah. <laughs> the rental fees. <laughs> you got to check for skid marks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Burnt out tires. Yo, they, they, they get they get like Nav- or like or like Avis or like Dollar Rental or wherever you got that shit from. They get the car back. You're like, yo, why are our tires bald, yo? <laughs> They were Why brand new. Pulled over the edge. <laughs> yeah, right? And yeah, right? the Juke's so, got some pull then. <laughs> who's the hardy uh the 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 uh the best partier in the paddock over there? <laughs> Quite a few of them, man. Um 
I've been I've been known to keep up with most people over there uh, <laughs> partying. Uh, I've had to carry a couple friends home on my shoulders up the hill. <laughs> nice. Back- that's a lot of fun but uh god i mean my my buddy joe broomfield is who i who i kind of hang out with and uh who i met when i first went over there in 2015 he was gonna drink the american under the table and (laughs) my first night on the isle of man i had i I was up for 30 some hours because i didn't sleep on the plane and we got there and I don't know. It was two o'clock in the morning, and and I, he was absolutely just annihilated. And I'm still going. The bars are closing, so we start going. And he's he's laying on the ground at the bottom of the hill. I had to pick him up on my shoulders and carry him up the fucking just road. Fireman's carry. Uh, me, me, him, uh, and Davy Morgan. Um, so uh, yeah, awesome. It was pretty, pretty, pretty epic. But uh, but yeah, no, a lot of those guys, uh, you know especially on a, on a night that you can let loose it's and there isn't riding the next day there's that's that those nights are always interesting because hey, you go down into douglas and there's, and there's people everywhere so you run into you know 20 30 riders every night that you go out um when there's not a not practice going on the next day for, for them or whatever right. right everybody's just hanging out partying yep what is oh, it that's awesome what is it about Europeans trying to beat Americans and everything, including drinking. It's like there's <laughs> something about there's something about us being Americans. Like they they want to come after us in every way, shape, and form. It's not our fault. Like your food tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, man. I love Thai food and Greek food and all that good stuff. Yeah, but Thai, Thai food, Thai food's Asian yeah. food. Greek well, food whatever. is like Mediterranean, but like I love that too. But like <laughs> I don't know what food's like in in Ireland, but. <laughs> They got fish and chips, right? They got fish, fish and chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Yikes! Fish and chips and mushy peas. Oh man, yo, with a let, side let of mayonnaise. Me, I'm I'm gonna pack my own food when when I go to when I go to the Isle of Man. I swear to God. <laughs> go go to a good chippy, and the fish and chips are really good. Just have to have them cook the fries a little longer because they normally have the fries like not they're like squishy, they're not crunchy. Yeah, so they're yeah. soggy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't we don't do soggy no, soggy no, fries no, out here in the streets. Fries, no. That's why yeah, we go I... to five guys. <laughs> but yeah. in terms of in terms of um your best experiences, is there is there any not just in the Isle of Man, but like in, in general, was there any uh uh bad experiences that you had with people like like you know, you just come in with the good vibes and this person just was not having it with you? <laughs> um not really. I mean, I've Lucky had a couple. Of, I've had a couple instances where you know I've I've been clipped by people and, um, and you know you you struggle through it a little bit. But I, I I I'm I'm the guy that doesn't really pay attention to that too much. Mm. If somebody causes me like bodily harm, then yeah, it's gonna be yeah, it's a different hurt. story, right? Yeah, damn um, right. The only oh, the yeah. only. The only time I've ever had a real incident was uh, obviously Leatham's Town um, when the dude checked up at the A uh, and I clipped him. But that was my fault for being too close, but I was trying to get a good run on him to get by him because yeah. uh, his bike was faster than mine. Um, he was just slower everywhere. In every corner, he was going <laughs> way too slow. Right. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and I had one instance, uh, our, my first unguided lap on the Isle of Man, I had, uh, I had a rider come by and we, where did we go over? We went through Ren Cullen and we came up over the jump and I landed and I went into the first right-hander and you click six gears. So you're, you're moving along. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Came up the inside of me where there was maybe two feet between me and the, and the sidewalk and um he clipped me and then clipped my front tire with his rear tire and i I was pretty hot and uh some people some people actually grabbed me in the pad i didn't (laughs) didn't even take i didn't even take my off i'd have shit myself i was storming to his pit but uh, i got stopped by a couple people and talked me down out of (laughs) beating the shit out of him but anyway (laughs) you know you know what what i would have done what i would have done personally because I'm I'm low key of a hothead myself in terms of like being competitive. Like in, in normal life, I'm not really a hothead, but in terms of being competitive, I would. So you know, what I would have done I would be like, "Yo, put your helmet on." Why? Just I, I just put your helmet on. Okay. <laughs> 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 smack the shit out of him. Just so he's not hurt. 
but you, you got right. the aggression out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, Adam, <laughs> during the uh, your weekend over there, um, or your week at the island, um, and during your race weekend, man, run me through or run everybody through your typical race weekend, like like the morning time. You know, obviously you work on your own bike, correct? Or you got certain people that help you do that, your team, uh, so this year preparation, had- all that stuff. Yeah, so so this year I I I hired on uh, VRS Racing, um, and Robbie took good care of me the whole time uh, with his crew, and and this year was crazy because I had the wife and four kids over there with us, and so it was just a it was a zoo the whole time. That was Absolutely. a little, little little awkward at times, but um, but no, I uh, you know I I'm I'm a hands on person, so. Um, we unloaded, they unloaded the bikes. I showed up and, uh, helped them put pit up, put the whole pit assembly up. Um, and then that night they got the bikes unloaded and stuff. And the next day I showed up and I started ripping fairings off the bike and just kind of going through and looking at it. And, mm. um, you know, and had, I, I did a lot of the work on to get the bikes set up for me. And then, you know, Robbie and crew did oil changes and change tires and brake pads and chains and sprockets and, like I didn't have to do a lot, but I was paying for the service as well. Right. Uh, in 2017, I did it all myself with with Joe, Joe Broomfield. Wow. And I, did, um, I, I had my own bike. So, and if we, well, we'll keep going on this subject. But you, you essentially, you have a race schedule for the whole fortnight. Uh, well, it's not a fortnight anymore. It's like nine days. Um, and you've got qualifying for five ish days, I think. And then it's three days of races, um, which I was in one race this year. So it wasn't, it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, but you, you get up in the morning, you go, go through whatever you need to do on the bike. And then you're scrutiny. And more. Oh, we lost them. Oh, we lost oh. them. We lost the mid story. Ah, oh. Hey, actually, ah, oh. I wonder. I, I uh, well, well, waiting for him to come back. Um, Jules, dude, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll wait for him to come back. But Adam's awesome, man. We we definitely need to get him back on. He's got great stories. Yeah, tell, no, tell I can me, tell, especially tell us, like, ones that, yeah. that are not sober. If you can right. shoot him a message, yeah. uh, let, let him know. Oh, there he goes. I'm back. There I have he no is. Idea. I have it's no okay. idea. It's okay. Uh, but anyway, we'll go right back to it. We you you. You get your bike through tech, which they call scrutineering over there, yeah. um, and the bike gets put into a holding pen, and you're off to do whatever until your practice qualifying time starts. Um, and you, just, you know, go have lunch and get stuff, get your get your stuff all sorted, and get your suit ready and your helmet, right. and all that. But um, so, it's a, a lot of waiting before you actually get on course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So let, let me let me ask you this, Adam. Since you you raced over there and over here in America, right? What's is, is the process of the tech that your bike goes through? Is that very similar to the process over here in America that our our tech bikes got to go through and our racing organization organization? So over here, you wrote, like uh, with the CRA up here in Minnesota. Uh, I mean, I raced with CVMA, AFM, all you know, a bunch of bunch of. And everybody's a little different, but the, like the CRA, they've got these stands. You roll your bike up on it with the lower off, and you know, I check, make sure you got your drain plug, safety wired, and all your, you know, calipers and all the all the stuff. And they make sure your throttle works and your brakes work, and mm. um, and then they send kind of send you on your way. Just make sure make sure the bike looks safe and that everything seems to be working. Mm. Um, on the Isle of Man, uh, when you go into the scrutineering bay. Um, you hand them a slip that has your name on it and it shows what days you've been through tech already and what class you're in and that stuff. You hand that to the scrutineer and then you go to the back of the bike and hold the back of the bike. And that scrutineer has a, a checklist basically in his head or her head. Um, and they, you know, they're banging on the handlebars and lifting the bike up and down, grabbing foot. I mean, they, they go through the bike from front to back, top to bottom. Um, yeah, the difference is, is, you know, you keep belly pans on and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they, they want the bike as it's going on the course. So, right. Um, so that's kind of a, a little bit different, but they're, they're a lot more, uh, thorough. thorough. Yeah. A lot more thorough than, than for sure. So go, going back to, uh, 
2017 when you're doing when you and uh i'm sorry what was the other gentleman's name joe <laughs> joe so when, yep. when, when, when you and joe were both working on your bike i understand that having more mechanics and stuff like that on staff is is always good and essential especially it's a speedy process right but is there a more sense of security that you know what's going on in your bike because you are working on your bike is is do, do you lose that security almost a little bit when you have more people on board or does it become easier in terms of quality control as time goes on um well in so 2017 we had a full fortnight so i had a week of practice and then it was a week of racing so i had more time um then we did this this with this new the new uh the new style manx that they got going on. Mm-hmm. um but i work on all my own stuff to begin with so this year was actually a little hard until i until i knew um um robbie and his and his one of his mechanics johnny uh were the only you know it was it was the three of us worked on the bike and if johnny was doing something on the bike he would tell me what he was doing when he was doing it like so i i I had a lot of i totally confident in that team um and you know we it's better to have three people looking over the bike than one because yeah, one person's going to miss something and missing something there is Chris is, is yeah. not, not a good thing. So, um, you know, when Joe and I did it in 2017, we, you know, it, it, it was fine. I had no, no issues. The bike ran the whole time. And, you know, I got, I think I got 20 laps in, in 2017. Um, oh, shit. this year I got 17 laps in, so and that's including the race. Damn, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. That's a lot. God, the, the adrenaline must be freaking insane. Like, I tell us what. No, sorry, Jules, go ahead. Oh no, no, it's like I, I was going to say. Like, I, I can't even begin to fathom like like what goes in in the mind of a racer before taking on the Isle of Man, but before taking on a race in general, let alone the Isle of Man. You're just trying to. You're just you're just doing laps in your head. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'll take, I'll take some sections where, I, you know, like in 2017, everything was new. Um, coming back after five years off, everything was new, and I was a newcomer. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how I kind of treated it, and that's how I needed to treat it because, I mean, the first lap I went out, I, to be honest with you, I, I literally was like, "What in the fuck am I doing here?" <laughs> I bet. Like everything's just going by you so fast, and. You know, you, you, there's areas where you're in sixth gear and you're completely flat, just tucked in behind the screen, going through corners and windy little road areas, and you know, going through Crosby, and I, you're just on the gas for so long at those speeds. Your first first night out there is kind of like an eye opener, like whoa. Um, and then the second night it gets better, and the third night you're kind of up to speed, and it depends on how many laps you can get in. I, I was lucky enough, I got. I only got two laps in the first night. We did have one issue with the bike um, this year and the team got it sorted and got me out for a second lap. Um, So the first lap was kind of a sighting lap and wasn't able to hold the throttle open all the way. And just, I went as fast as I could just to get around and not, you're not allowed to to tour. So, you know, I was was going faster than touring, but definitely uh, was, struggling with the bike and just trying to get myself around so that we could get back out um but then the second night i was able to get four laps in in a night well that's a that's a race distance so and then literally i did two laps they fueled me up sent me back out and i came around at the end of the third lap and uh when you're coming up onto uh glen crutchery road uh from governor's dip area you, normally they have somebody up there with a checkered flag and then you got red flags and then you pull in and you're done well there was nobody with a checkered flag and i'm like holy shit i got i'm getting a fourth lap <laughs> awesome. and it was it was awesome because it you know it helped it, the more laps you do in a sequence you the the more you remember because you you right. were there and you're doing it again and you're like okay i screwed up here i need to run i need to run a little wider in here and hold the throttle through here right. I can go faster through here. So that was, that was, that was really helpful. Yeah, I, I bet. So, so what, what was it like just for me uh, as a, as a fan, when I closed my eyes and, and I listened to them at the TT, what, what was your very first lap like by yourself on the TT? Oh, on the mountain course. It's, uh, yes. 
uh, I, I remember coming in and being like, how the fuck is this legal and who's going <laughs> to, where, where's the cops? Are they going to ask me now? Made the shit. <laughs> no shit. But yeah, and, it, and in every lap is like that. You come in and you're just like, how in the hell is this even legal? You know, you're going buzzing by houses and lampposts and jumping roads and your local McDonald's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the pub. The pub, yeah. I think yep. I think Forrest Dunn was was talking about it. We had Forrest Dunn on the yeah. podcast in season one. W- wonderful dude. He was yep. just telling us about like 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 he was like, "Yo, we be passing grocery stores, yep. <laughs> like restaurants." I'm just like, <laughs> dude, it's like if there's anywhere I'd rather crash, it'd be into a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I want the pub, yeah man. right store. <laughs> or, or I want the pub or, or the you. pub. Yeah, <laughs> give me something strong. That's awesome. Yep. So. Out of every place you've been to, Adam, where's your most favorite place you've ever ridden? To be honest with you, the the Ulster Grand Prix in uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, that 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 course is is amazing. I mean, it it flows so well, um, and it's not as. Uh, don't get me wrong; I absolutely love the Isle of Man. That's that is that is by far my favorite track road that you can right. run right. on. Right. But if, if we're talking like my, my, my first real road race uh, was at the Ulster. So it was kind of, I kind of got a little special spot there in my heart for that. And the, it uh, kind of bums me out that they haven't, haven't gotten it back yet, but yeah. uh, fingers crossed, they get it going this year. I won't be able to do it because it's literally the weekend that the Manx starts. Oh, uh, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it just, I don't know. It just flows and I'll, I'll send you my a YouTube link. I have the lap from, uh, the Dundra, oh, yeah. the challenge yes. that I did. And, um, you know, I, it was all, it was wet the whole week. Um, oh. I mean, my first opening laps around the place, it was an absolute downpour. I couldn't even hardly, uh, Davey was my rider instructor there and, um, I follow trying to follow him. I couldn't even see him half the lap because the rain yeah. and spray was so bad. But uh, yeah, it, it it was just a mega event, and uh, you know I've yet to I can't I can't duplicate it anywhere else. It's just you know your first road real real road race finish and all that. I, now I did go to Kells uh, outside of Dublin earlier in the year. And we qualified for super sport and super bike on the same 600. Um, but we, it got rained out the uh, overnight. They got like three and a half inches of rain and it like Holy washed shit. part of the road and they had to cancel the event. So <laughs> yeah, forget three inches of rain. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, it, was, it was insane. It was insane. Jeez. What, what's that your favorite cool. American track? Um, favorite American track would probably be Barber. Um, yeah. and then I, I, I really like Chuck Walla out, out, uh, the, the CVMA series out there in, uh, desert center in California. Um, uh, that track is another track here that, uh, it's kind of, it's in the middle of absolutely fucking nowhere, uh, in the desert, but it's, the, it's got a lot of flow. It's got awesome ups and downs, off camber, camber. It's got the huge bowl turn, which is hilarious, fun, um, and it's yeah, it, it that's that's a brilliant track. It's fast, sure. it's flows, it's great. It's not big enough to host a Moto America event, though. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna ask that. Yeah. Hey, oh yeah, they could, but the problem with Moto America is it's too hot in the summer out there. Uh, oh yeah, those tires will be melted. <laughs> they they do it if you if you look it up. CVMA uh, uh, does a winter series there, so they're they're racing out there now. You know, over the winter they have five or six weekends that they that they run. Um, so all the, all the Moto America guys, yeah, they're out there practicing over practicing, the winter. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, like everyone's there. Like, weather. like we, we've been trying to reach out to Brandon Posh. He's like, oh, I'm in Chuck Walla. I'm like, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I guess cause it's your, it's your prototypical t- uh, <laughs> test track. I think that'd be yeah. sick. You know, like, I feel like, I feel like, uh, having one or two, uh, test tracks preseason, would be dope because uh I, I don't know maybe you guys can fill me in but i know moto gp does testing in sepang 
and they do testing in uh uh where, where else do they do testing in Hereth, right? You know this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you know so, this. so, so they, they they do it there. Moto America, I don't know if they have a designated testing track, and I feel like they should. I feel like it would make for for a more competitive uh, uh, division if if they were allowed to do some testing, right? Because ultimately, what what me and Chris and like a whole bunch of other people rave about is that we're here to promote what what Moto America is out to the world, right? Because we freaking need Americans in, in the top level. Yep. So in order to do that, Facts. we need all the data that we can get so we can provide a competitive a competitive matchup in, in, in Moto America. So every season, it's always someone is up eight seconds and the rest of everybody can go fuck all. And I'm just like, come on, dude. Like, yep. like all, all, re- all respect to, to the front runners. But, man, I, I would want to see a little bit more. of a, This season was, was a little bit better. But I feel like, you know, if we were allowed to to test preseason from now and now on and so forth, I feel like, you know, it would make for a better competition, in my opinion. Yeah, the only the only issues you have with that is you get people that are up here. You know, Brett Donahue is a good friend of yeah. mine. Uh, he runs – he's number 10 in Moto America on a Super Twin uh, running the 07. But, uh, you know, I mean, we're in northern Minnesota. You know, you, you, you got to drive 10, 12 hours to get to a track to go do any testing because yeah. there's nothing up here that you can test at until may so you know that's the tough thing there and, and moto america has done um a great job with picking multiple tracks kind of all over um mm-hmm. uh, and it's and it's good to see like they then they came back to brainerd uh, in 2021 uh up yeah. here and the last time that the that AMA had ran here was like 2004 or something like that. Yeah, I mean, long, long, long time. time. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> last time the AMA ran here, it was Miguel Duhamel and <laughs> all that. that Aaron whole. Yates. Yep, yep. Mm. Oh. The Yates uh, brothers. Yep. And uh, so it, it's good to see them good getting back to some of the tracks that are still here, but they're not maybe utilized uh, utilized as much. And yeah. Um, but again, you, you get the deal where it's hard to it's hard to run that track. It's available from you know May to September basically, and uh-huh. anything anything in September you're hit or miss. I mean, I've, I've we had some sprint races. We called them the snowflake sprints because it was freaking snowing on us while we were out there. And <laughs> then nice, um, nice. That that sounds dangerous as hell. <laughs> cold, yeah, for real. It's cold, yeah. I uh, bet. But yeah, it, it's I don't know. It's it's pretty. It's 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 hard for some of us in the uh, us Northerners where you can't go to a track year round. So, yeah, right. um, but it's also a good time too to rebuild bikes. And like you saw, That's my alley yeah. downstairs is in a million pieces. And uh, you know, I'm like, I'm I'm glad I don't have to be testing right now because I'd be rushed and that's true. Trying well, to I, trying to get it together. I just I just feel like you know some some riders uh can benefit from oh, a consistent when, preseason test. Yeah, and when you're talking pro level riders, I mean that's that's a whole different ball game and those guys are training on dirt bikes, they're training on uh flat track bikes, they're training on anything they can train on year round. I mean, if you if you think about it, there it's not just Moto America testing. They're they're going to Rich Oliver Mystery School and yeah. on Edwards, you know, tornado boot camp down in yeah. Texas. You know, they're uh-huh. hitting, they're hitting stuff up like that and and they're and they're honing their skills and keeping keeping things up. Keeping uh, busy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I guess what one, one last one for me before I pass it to Chris. Um so with with, with your experience being outside of, of America and seeing a whole bunch of uh um ethnicities and and a bunch of people that race on a professional level and how scarce that Americans are racing at this like at at, at a top level. What do you think? Cuz I I don't know why me, but I'm bombarded with this question all the time. Not Chris, me. What do you think Americans can do uh, uh, in order to kind of propel ourselves to that next level? Like, what, what what is it that we can change or add or or just anything in addition to what we're currently doing to make us better to compete with the freaking Italians? <laughs> freaking I, I always get hit with this question, <laughs> so I'm sharing the shit with you guys. It's not fucking fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh i mean honestly the 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 racing 
the racing that I have done is all roads. Uh, I raced at Cadwell Park, so that's BSB. Ooh, mega. I, I'm Ooh. going there next year. This year, I mean. And it's a whole different world over there. And to get there and to actually have a bike ready to go and have everything sorted is, is i mean for us over here coming from the states it's a nightmare at times <laughs> yeah. um you know unless you have a sponsor that lives over there that is willing to help you out and haul your bike and gear and you and everything all over the country i mean it's it, it's it's hard it's hard it's not like it's not like packing up my van and running to california to chuck walla to go race with those guys or out to out to colorado right high plains you know you it takes me a day to try to get over to high plains in, in colorado um you know 14 hour drive or something like that so you add in the fact that you've got a bike here in the states if you want to use that you got to ship it. it takes a couple months to get it over there if you're doing the slow boat air freight costs big money and that you know i mean you know that's quicker obviously but um unless you got sponsors paying for that you know that's that's another thing um and you know and and road, real road races like the isle of man like the ulster that shouldn't be something that everybody does to be honest with you you want to do it that that is a that's in your heart you want to do it because it is right. dangerous it is not it's not like going to cadwell or um any track over there that's a real track runoff right uh, america agree, totally. does not have anywhere in the united states that we can practice for that so when I say that, you know, not everybody should go do this, it's, they shouldn't, you know, unless you want to, you shouldn't go do it. I mean, that's, that's the only, that's the only thing there. Um, I think Moto America is doing a great job here. Um, there's a, there's a bunch of kids coming up in here uh, on the four hundreds and stuff like that. And they're kicking ass and they're going to be on six. Yeah. And, you know, they might get them, they might get a, a wild card Moto two or something like that. Uh, Hell yeah! They, I'm banking they, on that shit. A world super bike, Tyler Scott, super please. Yeah, yeah or, Scott. or or even a BSB opportunity. A I mean, BSB absolutely. Yeah, Brandon Posh. That's uh, that'd be that'd be a great, a yes. great. Uh, I, we we've we've been out of this for so long because we didn't really have an AMA series for years. Uh, right. You couldn't. When was if we could roll back ten years ago? When where could you watch? racing motorcycles on the television that's true hardly anywhere i mean you want a nascar race we got you covered um uh, indy we're good to go but yeah, yeah no, motorcycle no, america yeah, no. tubes there for a while and um i think moto america is doing a great job um hell yeah with with yeah. promoting getting i mean i noticed this year even up here we we had local local news coverage of it network coverage of the races that you could watch and now you've got live feeds like this podcast you know you can yeah well actually you can go on to on to ama's site and moto america's site and actually watch the live feeds from all over the place so uh, and also the, the the deal with fox sports was also big yep yep yeah so yeah, we're, yes, we're, we're getting there. I, I, I guess what, what I'm trying to pick at is like, you know, if, if there was a way where uh, I guess us as Americans could just like maybe ma make an investment. I, I, I think Sean, Sean Dylan Kelly is going to be that, that first uh, true like American investment into the motorsports because he's already there. He's on moto two. Mm -hmm. He's arguably one of two. I mean, there, there's Joe Roberts, but I feel like everybody has given up hope on Joe Roberts already. <laughs> like, I, I i personally enjoy watching them I, I i like watching them i i wish them the best but i feel like if if i were a gambling man i definitely gamble all my chips on shot Dylan kelly especially because of how young he is and the fact that he went from a 600 to a moto 2 bike versus uh I, I, he went I, from a production bike to a real race bike yeah 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 exactly right um so um, the, the the problem is too jules is that the, the structure that they have in spain and italy is completely different than what we have you know they've got these little mini meadows when they grow up they're two and three year olds on them going to little cart tracks where they set up cones and parking lots and they and and dude that's what they do and that's what they know right it's like yeah. uh, soccer to the rest of the world where out here in america unfortunately it's not like that until we have an infrastructure in place like that it's going to be very few pickings 
yep. I'm afraid for us in the future going over there and really making a big impact. I'm not saying there's not going to be a few. I mean, there will be some, but nothing like Spain and Italy are, are puffing out like, right? you know, mice fucking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, just pumping them out, God damn it. Damn, yeah. damn, damn. Forget so, Spain, Spain but, and Italy uh, just... <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, so what's your plans for next year? Well, this year, Adam, I should say. <laughs> um, well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in touch with BRS racing who I rode with at the Isle of Man last year. Um, and we're, we're working on a plan. Don't have everything ironed out yet, but, uh, um, what I want to do is, uh, is I want to ride a 600 and a super twin. So ride yes. two class. And then um, uh, I want to go over in July uh, and go race the Southern 100 um, on on the Isle of Man, do the Manx on two bikes again, and then uh, we're planning on staying over there and going back to England over to Scarborough and uh, go racing the full again. So um, you know, it just depends on on finances and funds and timing and all that fun happy horse shit to see if we can make it. <laughs> see if we can make it happen um, right yeah that's that's the biggest thing you know i mean uh, I, i'm i do this on my on my own dime on uh and we you know we make it work when we need to but uh absolutely you know, it's not i don't have big sponsors or anything like that and uh you know the the help that i get from people over there is is amazing um you know robbie with brs racing has been pff, spot on just uh you know great guy to deal with and yeah. uh, you know he's become a great friend um and i don't think he likes that i forget that he's six hours ahead of me and i send him messages at like five o'clock at night here <laughs> his phone's pinging at midnight over there he's like oh, leave me the fuck alone <laughs> <laughs> yeah right you need all <laughs> but, uh, but yeah no it that, that, that's kind of the plan I, I got the cowie here is getting rebuilt by uh the the engine's getting re getting a valve job and new pistons and rings and bearings and all that Good. stuff. So, um, keeping busy. Yeah. And then, so we'll run that this year with the CRA and, um, over at Brainerd and we'll see what happens. You know, uh, I might, might get back out to Colorado again. I, I love high plains, uh, out there in Byers, Colorado, about an hour east of Denver. That track is, a bunch of motorcycle guys designed it so it's got like a corkscrew like laguna it's got nice off nice. campers banked it's it, it's just a fun track and uh you know it's it's a roller coaster ride I, the elevation changes are, are mint <laughs> that's, that's gonna be lit i bet so that's gonna be lit that's awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's awesome that's amazing that's, I, yeah, have is... you ever been to vir Ooh, no i've VR. not been to VR. Oh. chris's home track well yeah, man, I, I kind of one of you guys to come out to VIR so we can hang out. <laughs> Dude, it sucks they took VIR out of the fucking schedule. Out of America, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> who, fucking who, Petrucci. Who, I'm kidding. Is it weird? <laughs> no, Moto America. They're not racing there this year. No, but who who who's the who's the club series that runs there? Is it Weira or? Uh, or is yes. it C- Uh yeah. It's Weira. I think it is Weira. Weira. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. I blame Petrucci. So. Petrucci. <laughs> Petrucci <laughs> bitch. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no. right. I love you, Petrucci. Love what That's you've done awesome. for us. <laughs> kind of. Uh, we, oh, we, we have a yet. we have a love hate relationship with Petrucci. We love that he was here and got eyes on the sport, but we hate the shit that he said about us. And he was. <laughs> but it is what it is. It's what it's what made. Honestly, it's what made this year or last year memorable. Like yeah. it was a yeah. very memorable season and it made me so proud to be a Moto America fan. I'm like, this is fucking wonderful. And that, that, that was just gas. That, that, that literally was just gas for this podcast. Cause man, every time, every time we talk about it with people and the other Moto America races, everyone just lights up like, yeah, yo, let's yeah. talk about this shit. Yeah. Fuck that guy. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> Nah, but it's, awesome. it's wonderful. But uh, boys, I gotta I gotta get out of here soon because I I have to actually go to my real job, <laughs> a real job. What is that? <laughs> yeah, and, and I I, I'm actually at work thing. right now, Adam. <laughs> me, yeah, my boss, yeah. Well, but my boss supports me so much on the podcast that I, I he lets me do them at work. So, oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's totally yeah. right. It's fucking I, epic. Yeah. I I love my job, but it, it'd be dope to to make some money like 
you know, motorcycle stuff. You know what I mean? Like that'd be, that'd be fire. It would. Yep. It would. So, yeah. yeah. So Adam, dude, look, listen, let's do this again. Cause we got a whole lot more we got to talk about. There's a whole lot of stories inside of you. I, I can tell right now. Good ones that, that we need. To oh, yeah. on out. Especially sure. ones where you're not sober. I need to I hear know. those. <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, there might yes. be one or two of those <laughs> one or two yeah, he yeah, says yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna have a, a, a another phone conversation with talk <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> apparently apparently he, he said sometime uh sometime next week he's gonna come through to my house and uh help me fix up my jixer oh nice there yeah. you go yeah he so it's on that. record <laughs> It's on record. Oh, you I know, be, I, Chris. I'd be no. careful. He do, he doesn't know how to work on motorcycles at all. Oh yeah, right. Yikes. No, not at all. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh no. shit! So and and, and Toluk, it, it, it's also going to be on Spotify, Toluk. So it's really going to be legit. Oh, 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 shit! Damn, he's going to blow up my bike. Sheesh. That's it. But anyway, Mister right. Adam to the tenth power, Bauer. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing a couple stories with us. We really appreciate it. And like what Chris says, we definitely love to have you back, man, because I know there are a lot of stories that you have that we would love to hear. So right appreciate your time, man. Thank you for coming through. Thank you, Chris, to show Simcoe's job for letting him stick again while at work to do this podcast. And for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, please leave us a like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell us what you think. Spotify, I don't know. There's probably a like system in Spotify. I don't know, but I got to figure that out. Uh, so for those of you who, who have anything that you want to say, go ahead, leave us some feedback because any criticism is good criticism. <laughs> Until next time, I am Cool Jules, Chris, the whole effing show, Simcoe, and Adam to the 10th power, Bauer. Thank you so much and have a wonderful